With only a few days to go to Teesside, round three of the BDC, we've got a brand new layout to release. Um, we've obviously put the virtual out not long ago, and like I say, it's a brand new, uh, brand new layout that's not been used yet. I went and tested the track uh, last week, and it is mega, I'm like an excited little child. This first entry this is, is a really on power, a bit like Mondello, a little bit blind, and you come into that with a lot more pace than I expected, it's, it's still a fast entry. Um, so yeah, really cool layout, something new, um, spectator wise, really exciting for them because they're so close to the action so all, all the way along this bank in here you literally it's there it's in front of the action um you obviously can't see clip one so the, you'll, you'll miss the clipping point one but the bonus of that is you'll literally see one or two cars sort of fly into view hopefully door on door um and yeah so that's going to be really exciting for those people that are lucky enough to be there um before i just pass you over to simon obviously the head judge for this year i'll just explain the brief change that we made that we want to keep clarifying over um, about the clipping boxes. So previously, we had normal clipping boxes like a lot of other championships run. This year, Simon uh, made a great call, in my opinion, to change to the A, B and C line. So the A line is always closest to the clip. So in this instance, we clip one, closest to that side of the track. B line, next one in, C line, the next one in. So as Simon will explain, the A line would be the perfect line that you want to be on, and you get points deducted for B and C or off that. Um, and like I say, it makes it a lot more transparent, it makes it so drivers know a lot more, spotters can see exactly where they're going and, and relay that information over. And as fans at home, you can watch it and try and understand where these scores come from that the judges are given and, and try and work out the deductions and see. Um, and like I say, make it all understandable and that's what we want so you can obviously enjoy it a little bit more and, uh, and yeah. learn more about drifting. Yeah, it just makes it more transparent like saying. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, I'm really excited for this line. I kind of wish I were driving this one to be honest. Um, but yeah, I'll pass you over to Simon and he'll explain what, we'd, what we would normally put across just in the driver briefings, but like I said, we want as many people as possible to understand and it gives the drivers a little bit more chance to uh, have a think about any questions they might yeah. have. It could alter setup of the cars, there could be a lot of things that come into it now, it's that higher level. Um, so it's just giving you as much, you know... Uh, it's effectively making sure that they're prepared before they get there, exactly. so that it's not just happening on the day with the briefing they've actually got chance like say to think of a question if there's something that we don't cover yeah and they want a specific answer <clears throat> it also gives people the chance to set a car up differently um and it also gives people that sort of bird's eye view of exactly where the car should be and why it should be there at that point so yeah, exactly. it works in that in that respect so yeah if you want to run through the uh run through the line exactly what the, what you're wanting from the drivers then okay yeah that's fine the lead car will be on the left with chicane to run through as normal when we can do it and the chase car will be on the right chase car may jump the start however he needs to remember he has to be behind him by the time he gets to the cones it's a big long pull up this hill as you obviously can verify it's quick it's fast the chase car obviously is going to start dropping in behind obviously the lead car is going to come round where the cones are and obviously then flick into one maybe a dab of handbrake maybe not Flick entry is always going to score higher, clutch kick entry. Um, big pull on the handbrake is going to obviously score less. Uh, the bottom line is your entry is up to you. You know, the bottom line is we want to get you round, obviously, to two and three. So, maximum angle to one to two, and again, three, four. Obviously, as you come round it, we've tried to make it early to allow you to get the slingshot past five, which is an inside clip. Inside has only got two lines, it's an A and a B because obviously you shouldn't need three lines on, a, on an inside clip. Seven is also an inside clip. So obviously from five, six and seven, we want to see maximum angle with maximum speed. Coming through obviously to eight on an airline. And then as you do your transition to nine, you will then be on a D cell somewhere just after your transition. You're probably going to be going back on power just after nine. Okay. You're going to run around 10, 11 and 12 and obviously run a wide line all the way past 13. So the edge of the track is, the A line is gonna be about six inch in from the edge of the track. Um, the bottom line is, especially here, there's some heavy concrete. We're gonna make sure it's on the track all the way around. We're not gonna be on the concrete on this one. So concrete will be deemed one wheel off, okay? Which does bring me to the wheels off before I go back into the chasing. The wheels off is deemed, you know, a point, maybe two points deduction. So I'm going to use this as a, as a good a good thing to show you. If you drop a wheel at nine and you just drop it off and back on, 
you're not penalizing yourself because you might have a little correction but it might be one or two points dropped if at the same point you then came all the way around one wheel dirt dropping then that's got to be awarded you know higher in deductions you know two three four points off if you have got sort of four <coughs> you know a meter over but you've still kept that inside wheel on again the deductions will grow with the more the mistake is so it could be as little as one or two points but that could grow effectively to seven eight points just on that one corner it's deemed to be more points off rather than on an inside line okay so if you're on an inside line you'd get deducted harsher because you're not leaving anywhere for the chase car to go but at the same time you're over the a line so we have to deduct some points because otherwise it's unfair because you're not on the perfect line so it's not as heavy penalization as been on the inside line but you're still going to get penalized for it yep okay and that goes for the straightening rule okay we've had many discussions about it we deem that it's going to be the same thing a small strain is going to be a small deduction a bigger strain bigger deduction and obviously you know if you're going to straight line from two or three clips it's potentially going to be a zero what i'm saying to you is a small strain is going to be deemed by us as points deduction because it's not fair i think on the the punishment don't fit the crime you know the bottom line is we want to make sure that we get two runs over the line and let the run speak for itself so we don't always automatically want it to be a zero and i think it's a little bit unfair so we've done it that way this time small deduction to a bigger deduction to a zero and that depends on how severe the straighten is all right going back to your chasing as you're obviously chasing in you are going to be door on door hopefully from clip one through to clip two and you'll just notice that clip three we're actually not to the edge of the track so this we did this time because we could do it we couldn't do it at three sisters because of the layout but we want the chase car to be really close one two and three now to allow the chase car to drop back a little bit here to the edge of the track we're allowing that as a chase car driver to get the slingshot through four so that it doesn't get left from four five and six and seven so hopefully the chase car will be in the correct position also on the bus stop where nothing gets left yep. the rest of the track then is pretty self-explanatory everybody's done it both ways round obviously it'd be angled you're going to be carrying a lot of angle here and you are going to be deselling here so the chase car needs to be aware of that as soon as he's done the transition the lead car is going to be selling it handbrake foot brake both slowing the car down so for us, your decel uh, zones is from three to possibly four, depending where you're going to do it. But that will be classed as a decel zone. Also, once you've done your transition, just after eight, up to nine, again, to get the car settled will be a decel zone. The rest of it, yes, we might see a jab of the handbrake, but it's not really going to be a decel zone because we don't think you're going to get maximum attack if you do too much of the drag. All right? Any yeah, questions that you've got? Well, yeah, one thing that um, we were briefly talking about earlier was the three meter rule. Something okay. that we've not we've not necessarily gone over a lot recently. So, do you want to explain exactly how the the three meter rule applies? So yeah, so the three meter rule basically applies. So if the lead car is on a perfect line and the chase car then is not touching the clip, that's perfectly acceptable as long as he's within three meters of the lead car. So if the chase car is there, three meters, he doesn't have to be on the air line. He's not losing any points at that point because as he's being he's aggressive as long as he's got the proximity. If the lead car comes through here, and obviously then as they come through three, and let's say that obviously the, the chase car puts way too much angle on at this point, and the lead car has obviously gone through four, you would expect the chase car then to not obviously go, he has to go back on the airline, he has to go back on the qualifying line. Which brings me to my last point. If you come through clip one, and you've been out dragged a little bit just through pace you've missed a gear or whatever me personally would rather see same as the other judges we would rather see you basically shortcut the track at that point <clears throat> dive onto them and finish the run all the way out so if we zone it which is how we mark it and how we judge it zone one would end at clip four zone two would end at clip eight zone three would end at the finish line so if matt was leading and i was chasing 
and I got out dragged. If I cut at that point up till this to four and Matt's on a really good line, I'm still giving the award to you at that point yep. because you're getting the advantage. However, if I then stay on his door all the way around to the finish line, the advantage will come back to me because I... Depending I've, on how, how... As long as the lead car has, has put in the A line, the qualifying line. Now, if that's scrappy, that's when it gets hard to, to call. But the dive, we'd rather see the dive go back door on door and obviously the battle finish strong. If we have where there's massive separation through to cars being faster, slower, then the best thing the chase driver can do is go back on the qualifying line and hope the lead car is cheating the line to get away from it, where he would be sacrificing points. Because if that chase driver is diving at zone one as such, zone two and zone three, they're going to lose. They're Correct. better off staying on the uh, on, on the qualifying line. line. Yeah. If they deem it where they can, uh, I've missed a gear, I'll go for it at that point. You're going to do one sacrifice in one zone, yeah. but then you're going to glue to his door all the way around within the three metre roll. You should take the advantage as long as the lead car has done what he's meant to have done. And these all these factors have to come into play, which is why judging is not always clear cut all the time. It's a judging decision and it's what we can see at the time and what we judge on at the time. We're trying to make it more black and white for people like with the ABC line yep. to help the spotters translate that to their drivers. Hopefully that's going in the right direction. So you've heard it there, Sam's explained exactly what he's expecting from the drivers. I'm sure they'll have some questions, but it gives them a few days to ponder over it and, uh, and come back to us. So let us know what you think. Like I say, if you go into the event, we can't wait to see you there. And if you're if not, then get onto bdcinsider.com, sign up, watch the live stream or sign up monthly and see the rest of the content that we've got there. Not long to go now, so yeah, exciting times. I kind of wish I were driving, but yeah, we'll see you there. See you at T-Side.